This week, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna take a stroll down memory lane and look back at some of the miniatures that I've painted up on the channel that I would consider to be my favorites. I've been painting miniatures on this channel for almost two years. We're actually approaching very rapidly the two year anniversary of Hobby Night. And that blows my mind. And I've not once gone back and actually looked at what I've painted with you guys over that time to go look at the improvement that I've had. So for today, I want to go ahead and do that, focusing on a couple of that. One are just my favorites, but were also key moments for me in my painting career where I felt things changed, something clicked suddenly, and it shows progression. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at these five miniatures. What better place to start than at the beginning with the Mind Stealer Spyranks the very first model that I ever painted on camera. And honestly, when I look at her and see how large of a model it is and knowing that I've struggled in the past with other larger models and being confident of going forward with them, I'm kind of surprised that she's actually what I started with. But I'm really glad that she is because I go back and look at her so often, especially when I am struggling with whatever current project I am working on, because she shows me where I was. She shows me where I began and I have improved so much. And every time I go and look at her and I'm able to reflect on the fact that I have improved on the fact that if I were to paint her a second time, I would do it so much better. I would play with more color. I would definitely make her a lot lighter and pull out some highlights because I went way, way too dark. But there are still a lot of things that I really like about her, like her horns or the armor. I really like what I did there. So there are still things I can like about the model, but things I can reflect on that I have improved on. And that always helps me whenever I am struggling with maybe the paint color choices that I've made, or if I'm trying a new technique and it's not going the way that I wanted it to. Speaking of which, talking about techniques and things I tried. So on this model, I didn't show making the base on camera or anything. And that is something I do regret a little bit. But the funny thing about this base is the fact that when I made it, it was my first attempt at doing a custom base. And for some reason, I made the cork on one side flush to the base and I let it hang over on the other side. And instead of cleaning up or trimming it or anything like, you know, you think you would do, I just left it, sealed it, continued to build on it, decided to paint it and just left it like that. And I have no idea why I don't know if it's laziness or if it was just my lack of confidence or what or just wanting to be done with the model, but I made weird choices and possibly things that I would consider mistakes now, but being able to reflect on it always really helps me when I'm in a jam. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. The next model I want to discuss on this journey is my Mythetic Blight Hauler, which I will tell you right now, is my favorite model from the entire Death Guard line. Maybe barring a couple of like individual Nurgling sculpts because there is that one that has the helmet on and he's super adorable. But in regards to the models that have come out for the Death Guard, the Mythetic Blight Hauler is my favorite. It looks like a tiny beetle. I love the combination of the fact that it looks super cute, but is vicious and deadly. Plus I run them all the time in my lists and I just love what they're doing in 9th edition right now. But the reason I put this model on my actual list and why I wanted to talk about it is because it was with the Mythetic Light Hauler that I really finalized my Death Guard color scheme. Up until this point, I had painted a number of Death Guard characters or models on the channel, but I had, and I had figured out exactly what colors I wanted to use. I even had figured out pretty much how I want to block out those colors and be able to distribute them throughout the rest of the army without everybody feeling too similar, but still having plenty of cohesion amongst the list. But with this particular model, I added in one key element that finally made the army come together. And that was when I added in Nurgle's Rot. I started playing and experimenting with a bit more technical paints and just other types of paints in general. Cause up until this point, I had really, really stuck to my contrasts, which I still do, but I've really learned to mix in other elements and other techniques and also just other brands of paint into my painting arsenal. And it's 
expanded my abilities immensely. And it started really with this particular model. And I also just love the fact that it finally made me feel like my Death Guard army was finished because it, I then added in Nurgle's Rot to basically every piece I did after that. Every unit got a little bit of that paint in there, whether it was on the vehicles to add some just like gooiness, like they were snotty and dripping stuff down onto the ground, or if it was on the bases of my actual Plague Marines and Terminators, because I like to imagine that as they're walking around to help make it a bit more thematic, that they're corrupting the earth beneath them and just ooze and slime and decay is rising up from beneath and creating these slime piles and gosh it just it works so well it taught me that i could mix other things in with contrast paint and not have to worry about it quite as much as i was because contrast paint tends to dry a bit matte and this technical paint is very shiny because it's designed to look like slime so i was very concerned going in that maybe it wasn't going to mix but it did and it just it opened my eyes and that's one of the reasons i love it We've looked at two relatively large models and now I'm going to direct your attention to the tiny chameleon in my hand because this is the third miniature that I wanted to feature. And the reason I want to talk about this little guy is twofold. One, he's my most popular painting tutorial. He is, basically that video has gotten the most views. I had a blast painting him. And the reason I had a blast painting him is because this is where I really started to push what I could do with contrast paint. Up until this point, I was using contrast paint kind of in the way that GW advertised it, but maybe not as like as much as what they advertise it for because they do one thick coat. And of course, I wasn't just slopping my brush in, pulling out a bunch of excessive paint and expecting that to work. However, I was basically going into the pot, not really thinning the paint down at all and not necessarily combining it with too many other types of paints. I wasn't layering at this point with the contrast paint until the skink. Because with the skink, I had already done a painting tutorial on doing some orc flush in the exact same way that you've probably seen me do on my commando very recently. But I didn't want to just mimic that and do the same thing again. So instead I decided to do something very similar, but instead of using just shades to layer over top the contrast to change its color, I was like, well, why can't I just use contrast paint to do that too? And of course I had experimented with this a little bit, but the skink is where it really clicked and where I really went, oh, I can layer these a lot more than I expected, gets a lot more out of the color range without actually having to physically mix the paints and still allow it to be really fast and effective. So I just, from here, I basically took the entire rest of that Underworld's kit and painted up the rest of them with the Chaos Cultus using a bunch of bold, bright colors, really pushing what I could get out of the saturation levels of the contrast paints. And I loved it. And I want to speak really briefly about the Underworld kits in general, because I've said this a number of times, probably in the news and maybe some of the painting tutorials themselves, but I really like to reemphasize the fact that those kits are great for if you are in a big project, you're building your army, Maybe you've gotten tired of painting the same model over and over again because you're working on your space marines or your orcs or whatever, and you've painted dozens of them at this point. Maybe you want something a little bit different. The Underworld kits are a great value. You get amazing sculpts out of them and they allow you to experiment and play and refresh your brain so that you're not just getting dragged down and possibly losing motivation on what your larger projects are. They give yourself just a way to take a break. And I absolutely adore that about them. And I can't wait for the new season because I want to see what new models I can pick up and use in between things to basically give myself a refresher. So the next mini I am going to be talking about is probably the model I would realistically say I am the most proud of. It is to best, to, to ugh, let me say that again. It is to date my best miniature and that is Abaddon the Despoiler. He is in a combination of basically all the techniques I had learned up until this point put into one model. And I look at him and I just, every time I am so happy. Like there is only one actual thing on this particular mini that I would change and that's his face a little bit because I don't think I quite pushed it as far as I could, although that is probably one of the few things with painting that I still really struggle with and hopefully 
will be working on in the future because I'm still just, I don't know, faces are tough, man. I don't always go into them very confidently, but everything else about this model, I am so pleased with, and I wouldn't change a thing because it shows where I've really grown to. I combined the fact that I love contrast paint. I combine it with metallics, which I had sort of avoided a little bit because I really like to go for the non-metallic look using the silicanum gray. But for him, I just was like, no, I really wanted to try to capture a more true grim, dark look. And I was able to. And for me, that was really especially rewarding because my normal style is a lot more bright and colorful and just very not grim dark, um, if you hadn't noticed on the channel. But for Abaddon, I was actually able to make him grim dark, still using contrast paints as much as I wanted to, still being able to get the vibrancy and saturation out of them in the way that I wanted to, but actually having it feel like it fits a little bit more into the like paint scheme that GW really popularized. And I just thought that was so cool. Like I just could not believe that I managed to do that with him. And the other thing that really sort of clicked for me at this point with Abaddon, other than the fact that I combined all of the techniques, was the fact that it's okay to build models in pieces, paint them, and then finish the assembly. Because Abaddon was one of the first figures that I really did not actually want to glue him all together to complete him. Um, I just figured it would end up being way too difficult to paint him if he was fully assembled. And I was right, or I assume I was right, because I made it a lot easier for myself by having him disassembled. And from then on, I started looking and approaching my model, like looking at and approaching my models in a much more like contemplative way when I was building them to go, is there a way for me to make this easier when painting or is the best opportunity for painting it to fully have it assembled? It's a choice that I make very deliberately now and it all started with Abaddon. The last model, well, models that I wanna take a look at on this journey with you is going to be my Commando and Bomb Squig because they're my most recent models, right? Why not end on where I am currently? And I love where my current style is. And as you probably have seen through this video, it is developed over time. I am combining the things that I learned on Abaddon and the Chameleon and even the Spyrings and my Blight Hauler all into my new Orc army. And it has been incredibly rewarding to see all of that effort, all of that practice come together in the form of a brand new force that I can run in a game that I actually really love playing. And that has been the coolest part of this journey on building this channel and actually doing all, making all this content basically, has been just feeling like I've actually improved. Because when I started this channel, one of my main objectives was not only to be able to teach you guys how to paint something, but also to allow myself to get through my backlog, to have a creative outlet, because I really hadn't had one since college. And everything that I've done up until this point, ending with my orcs that I'm working on now, and it's of course not actually ending ending, but that's where I currently am at, has all been building towards this. And it's been super rewarding to be doing. And so I hope that as you guys continue on your own painting journeys, you'll continue to look back at what you've done previously, see your own improvement, and be able to get some joy out of that and knowing that you are practicing, you're getting better, and as you go forward, you're only going to continue to improve. That has been the best part of doing this so far, is just knowing that I am always improving, I'm always growing as an artist, and I get to create really cool things in the process. Like I have done so many cool paint jobs. I've got to work with a bunch of unique and different models. I'm continuing to expand that. And I know a lot of you guys out there do too. Like maybe GW was your first game, but you expanded out into other things. There's plenty of really cool things to paint out there to challenge yourself with. And that's always great to be doing. Always continue to challenge yourself build new things, paint new things, and just keep on hobbying. That has been it for looking at my personal hobby journey. Please absolutely down in the comments, tell me about your own. I always love hearing what people are working on, what they're improving, what maybe techniques they're trying out, because that always gives me new ideas to try things out for myself. 
I want to give an extra special thank you to my patrons for making it so that content like this can continue to happen. You guys are the best and thanks so much for supporting us. Now, I have been Angela, you have been watching Hobby Night, and I'll see you guys next week with some more videos and of course, some news on Sunday. Bye.